According to the elastic rebound theory of earthquakes proposed in 1910 by geologist Henry Fielding Reed of Johns Hopkins University, rocks along the fault are like twigs that bend under stress but snap when stress crosses the threshold. The rocks along the faults tend to accumulate strain as continental plates collide against one another and finally give way when it becomes unbearable. Sudden snapping of the rocks and release of strain causes the earthquakes. Since the theory is based on strain accumulation, high magnitude earthquakes should, should occur only after a long interval. But the occurrence of many high magnitude earthquakes before the strain can accumulate and can cross the threshold shows that the elastic rebound theory alone cannot explain the triggering mechanism. Let's look at the question. Which choice states the main idea of the text? Option A. The fact that there are very few high magnitude earthquakes proves that the elastic rebound theory is incorrect. Option B. Earthquakes may be triggered by factors other than the buildup of strain caused by movement of continental plates. Option C. The elastic rebound theory does not explain many high magnitude earthquakes that have occurred during the world. Or option D. The basis of the elastic rebound theory has been incorrectly identified as the release of accumulated strain along fault lines. So let's look at the question here. It's the main idea of the text, central idea. So we need to understand the whole passage. For that, let's look at the clues uh, given here one by one. And then let's try to make our own prediction and then do process of elimination. So in the first part, the author clearly discusses the concept of elastic rebound theory of the earthquakes, right? So look at that. These are the points given here. Towards the first part, he clearly talks about the elastic rebound theory of the earthquakes. Next, he the, the, the theory is explained, right? He clearly explained like what is the theory exactly? The elastic rebound theory he gives an example of the um, twig. It's like this, just a twig that bends under stress and snap when stress crosses the threshold. So he's just explaining that in detail. And then towards the end, he again casts doubt on the trigger mechanism because look at the end here. But the occurrence of many high uh, high magnitude earthquakes before the strain can accumulate right, and, cr and cross the threshold shows that the elastic theory may not explain the triggering mechanism. So he believed that the, the theory of Hill, Henry Fielding uh, showed that because of strain, right, because of strain, uh, earthquakes happen. But uh, he was able to observe the earthquakes happening before the strain can happen, right? So the, the, theory, the Fielding said that First the strain will happen, then the earthquake, earthquake may happen. But he was able to find the earthquake before the strain, right? Which clearly means that there's something something else contributing the earthquake and this alone cannot contribute the earthquake. So let's uh, try to make our own prediction. So the conclusion what we're looking for, it, for is that the buildup of strain may not be the only reason for the earthquakes. Something else may happen because he was able to identify the earthquake happening before the strain could happen. So this is what we're looking for. So the central idea is that this the earthquake can happen for many other reasons and not only for the buildup of strain. So let's look at the options one by one. Let's see which option is closest. Option A, the fact that, it, that, that there are very few higher magnitude earthquakes proves that the elastic rebound theory is incorrect, right? Now option A is clearly wrong because the author uses the fact that high magnitude earthquakes occur without huge strain buildup. He doesn't state or imply that there are few high magnitude earthquakes, right? He's just saying that the strain, the, the, man, the earthquakes are happening because of the strain, right? The point is not about there are few high magnitude earthquakes. So option A can be eliminated. Let's go to option B. Earthquakes may be triggered by factors other than strain caused by movement of continental plates. Yes, this is close to what we have because there could be other factors that triggers the earthquake, right? These are factors that uh, are to be discussed. So option B sounds to be correct. It's, to, it's close to what we have here. Let's keep that on hold. Let's go to option C. The elastic rebound theory does not explain many high magnitude earthquakes that have occurred in the world, right? Now C is clearly incorrect because that is again not the focus of the text. The author concludes that, concludes that there may be factors other than the buildup of strain, right? Not uh, to explain high magnitude earthquakes that have occurred around the world. So C can be eliminated. And then let's go to option D. The basis of the elastic rebound theory has been incorrectly identified as the release of accumulated strain along the fault lines. Right now, D is clearly in, in, uh, wrong because the author, does, the author does not doubt the basis of that theory. 
right? The basis of the theory is, is correct, right? The author is not trying to doubt the theory. The author is just telling that there are many other possibilities of the earthquake. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that the theory is incorrect, or that doesn't mean that he starts doubting the theory, right? So he concludes that there may be other factors responsible to cause the earthquake, right? So option D can be eliminated. So therefore, the correct answer for this question should be option B. Earthquakes may be triggered by factors other than the buildup of strain caused by movement of continental plates.